X is Miller. Kickers generally like playing on turf. So do return men, and so do receivers. It's a faster surface. And uh, guys, uh, even if they're, they're not psychologically, they're faster. Miller runs up, kicks it. It's a bouncing kick. It's going to be touched by one of the upbacks and then dribbled to Fabish at the 15. He'll come to the 20. He will not see the 25. He'll be hit, and the ball will come loose. But the officials will say that the ground on the tumble as he got spun up in the air caused the fumble. They probably made the right call, but it was Bob Horst down there who would have recovered it had the ball been live. The tackle was by Josh Lebrecht, who's also coincidentally getting a start today in place of Brandon Little at the outside linebacker. Uh, something that we're going to see, though, right away is a no-huddle offense out of the Penn Quakers. And Penn will use one running back. They'll use two tight ends right now. One of them they call a U-back, which is actually in the backfield. It's more of a blocking back, kind of like an H-back. And the first play will go to the running back, and starting will be Amon Abbey, a 5'9", 172-pound junior. All three backs are about the same size. Abbey is generally the better known as the combination inside-outside runner. Jason Scott is better inside, and Deion Camp has the breakaway speed. So they all kind of bring you something a little different to the table. Twin set, Masick and Rouse going to the left side. The tight end is Tonelli and Tucker is the U-back. And again, DeRosa the quarterback. As Brian mentioned, Josh Lebrecht in for Brandon Little, who's out with a back injury. DeRosa will throw left side to Miles Masick, makes the catch the 30, and then at 6'4", 200 pounds, carries the little cornerbacks with him out of bounds for a first down. Well, like I said, he's, he's most dangerous after he catches the ball. That's nothing more than a three-yard stop, but he's able to pick up seven additional yards with just some really nice flair moves once he caught the ball. Penn with their no huddle tries to take advantage of making the defense stay in the same base, I would assume. Bucknell does not substitute a whole lot on defense. First and 10 Penn as they come out to the 35 yard line. Again, one back, they'll go with two receivers and put them both to the right side and go with double tight ends. DeRosa will hand off to Abby. Abby will try to come around right in. Michael Haggerty will be the first man to get to him. We'll call it no gain for the Quakers. Right. Lascott, Knox, Matt Julian, and Scott Freeman make up the line, and this Sears right at left tackle looks more like Sears and Roebuck. 46, 6, 50. Yeah, they, they pulled that guy out of the, uh, the heavy-duty section of that catalog because he's blocking out the sun at about 350, uh, or maybe even weight unknown at the left tackle spot. Second down and nine and a half. They'll give him a half yard. Twin set, Rouse and Basic again wide to the left. Bucknell will blitz on second and long. DeRosa will throw it out of the flat to Basic. He'll make the catch in front of Jackson and then carry Jackson with him for two or three more yards, and it'll leave Penn with a very workable third down and two from their own 43. They get to the 45 for a first down. Willie Jackson's going to be busy today, as is Charlie Crudup, because when they see that ball being fired on a three-yard stop, they can't hesitate and break down. They need to go make that tackle fully aggressive and not let Mason get started because he can carry some people now. He's big and strong. Third down and two now for Penn. They'll go in the I formation for the first time today. They've got Jason Scott in the game at the tailback. It looks like Kevin Tucker lines up at the fullback spot. Third down and two. DeRosa hands. No, play fakes to Scott. Rolls out, almost hit by Berman. Dumps it out of the backfield to Tucker. That is his first catch of the season from the fullback or U-back spot. It's good enough for a five-yard pickup and a first down. The important thing to realize in this concept of the no-huddle offense is this is not almost 20, 25 seconds to run their play. And I see Bucknell is able to substitute. You have about 10 seconds to make the substitution, so it has to be done very quickly. But it throws the defense out of being able to establish any kind of a rhythm. First and 10, Penn at their own 49-yard line. They're back to the one back, two wide receivers and double tight ends. Bucknell in a five-man front. DeRosa will hand it off to Scott. Scott over the left side, 50, 45, 40. has a first down, and it's finally dragged down inside the 40 at the 37. Just an explosion on the left side, right and Glasgow, as well as the fullback or tight end on that play, Tucker. They just blew Bucknell out over the left side and carried him for about 13 yards on the pickup. Well, Bucknell's got a good scheme. They're getting penetration and they're creating some chaos in the backfield. They've got to make the play when they have the opportunity. That play should have been stopped for no gain. Over the ball at center is Rich Knox for Penn. Pat Feely, Ed Berman, and Hunter Adams the down three. LeBrec and Hill, the outside linebackers. First and 10 Penn from the Bucknell 37. They'll hand it off to Abby, who's the back. Abby will have another first down inside the 27 to the 26. A gain of 11 more for the Quakers. And again, nothing fancy. Just running up that hash mark straight up the gut. And it's another big gainer for Penn on the ground. Rob Bird is really pounding the, uh, the turf right now because he had a shot to make that tackle in the backfield for the second time in a row, not able to come up with the play. 
First and 10 Penn, back-to-back -back runs for first down yardage. They have it now at the Bucknell 26-yard line. Bird and Haggerty, the inside linebackers. We give you Jackson Miller, Crudup, and Boyle in the secondary. DeRosa back to pass, steps up in the pocket. He will run, get across the 25 to the 24. Haggerty and Berman make the tackle. It'll be a gain of three on the scramble. Second and seven coming up for Penn. No score early in the first quarter, 11.58 and counting to go in the period. Penn on their initial march. Bucknell has yet to see the football. Well, Hunter Adams got good pressure on that play, and he, he really forced DeRosa to scramble. You like to see pressure from the other side and maybe force him into that other, you know, that other rusher and uh, be able to get a sack on that play instead of a three-yard gain. Second down now and seven after the three-yard gain. DeRosa play fakes to Abby, rolls to the right, throws it right side. Underneath, Mason makes the catch at the 10. He had another receiver, Eric Thompson, behind him wide open near the goal line. It'll be a pickup of about 12 or 13 more, yet another first down for Penn, and they now have a first and goal situation at the Bucknell 9. This is a very efficient offense, and uh, they're great at counter-punching. Bucknell is really overplaying strong side runs and really pursuing down the line, and they're off setting that or countering that by bootlegging twice so far in this drive. First and goal, Penn at the Bucknell 9. Abby the lone back, twin set to the left side. Bucknell will blitz, hand off up the middle to Abby. He'll get inside the eight, drag tackle. Michael Haggerty. So the Bison backed up on this first drive by the Penn Quakers. As they keep marching it between the tackles, throwing a few good passes out to Miles Masick, who's caught a couple on the drive. Oddly enough, uh, the Quakers go to a real explosive offensive set here. Uh, after they get inside the 10-yard line. Three wide receivers. The back of Scott stays in the block. DeRosa has all day. Throws it to the end zone, and it's intercepted by George Juanitz. He'll try to run it out of the end zone, and that'll be a safety. It'll be a safety. No, they're going to say no, it's a touchback. touchback. Oh, I thought that he didn't get down in time. I would have put the two hands over my head and call it a safety there, Brian. Well, he definitely wasn't trying to get down. He got tackled down. I don't think he knew the rule, but DeRosa really was fooled on that play because the receiver, Fabish, had fell down coming off the line of scrimmage. She lined up in a slot, and DeRosa was really forcing the ball in there. He never got open. Bucknell was able to cover him with three men. Very, very poor decision on DeRosa's part. Big play for Bucknell. Penn has it for nearly four and a half minutes on this drive, and they turn it over on the interception to George Juanitz. Bucknell will go to the run on first down. Lemon will go out from the 20 to the 23-yard line, a gain of three for Lemon over the left side. Lemon will open at the tail. The quarterback, of course, is Jim Fox, who's completed 62% of his passes this season. The wide receiver, Steve Noteboom, and uh, John Spross, the tight end, Ted Stover, and the fullback, at least to start, is Jeff Bombing. We're expecting to see Bob Horst is back from the concussion to play here today as well. Noteboom to the right, Sikowski to the left. The front line of Penn, the most inexperienced of their defensive units. Second and seven as Fox splits his backs. Five-man front for Penn. Fox back to pass. Fox hit as he is just about ready to throw. Doesn't throw and gets sacked. Tom McGarity there, who now picks up his 12th career sack for the Quakers. Well, McGarity's the tri-captain, and he's the big play guy for this uh, Penn front, the most experienced returning lineman coming back, and they really kind of built things around him. Nobody picked him up for Bucknell there. He came free. They got into an odd set, and I think that they were supposed to turn out that direction. They may have missed a call, but he came free in a play, and, and uh, Jim Fox never saw him coming. Change in Bucknell's offensive line. The freshman from Sweden, Patrick Janssen, gets the call at right guard for Hodges and Hogan. Missy Ack remains as the right tackle. Lennox at center, Donkers and Gay will be on the left side. Hand off to Lemon over the left side. He'll get the better part of eight or nine yards after Fox's four or five yard loss. So Bucknell will have a third down coming up and a long three to go for a first down. Ball just outside the 27, actually now just inside the 27. So it'll be a long two. That may have been third down and was. I'll get my numbers straight here, Brian. It's now fourth down and they'll have to put away. Bucknell wishes it was only third down because they just picked up 11 yards and it was a very good call that draw. And uh, really things opened up nicely. They made a nice move at the line of scrimmage to escape them. Fourth and two, there was no truth that I was running the chains of Missouri that day with Colorado. Miller ready to punt this season. Miller is averaging about 36. A kick pen will play for the return. Fabish will call for the fair catch. Touch it. He'll have to go back and pick it up. Now he'll be tackled. No, he gets up and can't move. He should be given five yards for delay of the game as he off the punt. And they'll make him take it where he finally caught it. Back around the 25, 26 yard line, 43 yards 
on the kick that time for Miller, and it'll be Penn's football after Bucknell is held to a three that, and out. That shouldn't be a penalty. It should cause he, uh, he gave the fair catch signal and then tried to pick the ball up and run with it after he muffed the catch. Penn will go without a huddle, and this is probably the time where it is most noticeable because they have their play called on the sidelines. Twin set, Rouse and Masick wide to the right side. That's the wide side of the field. He'll play fake to Abby. DeRosa will come right looking to throw, dumps it over the middle and throws it behind Masick, who was wide open at the 40-yard line. DeRosa rolling out, had trouble stopping and planning and throwing to Masick over the middle, and it's incomplete second down coming up. Well, I, I guess I should expect this because we're, we're going against an Ivy League opponent today, but I've never seen an offensive set like Penn is throwing at Bucknell here today. Masick is literally four steps from the sideline on that last uh, play, and he's got the entire field to work against Jackson last time. Now they have crud up against Masick. Linebacker Michael Haggerty is now out of the slot. He's going to charge from out there, and Penn will run the ball up the middle to Amon Abbey on second and ten. He'll pick up maybe two from the 26 to the 28. And Penn will have a third down and long, third and eight coming up. Penn has not done a good job this season on third downs. They're only a 26%, 8 of 31. Bucknell's defense has been very stingy on thirds. They're giving up only a 29% success rate for opponents trying to convert third downs. This is a huge challenge right here, and I see that Bucknell's uh, very capably able to do substitution. They just brought Hunter Adams in. They're going to rush him over the right guard right here with Willie Hill on the outside. We've got about a nickel or dime package in the game as some extra defensive backs have come in. DeRosa on third and eight. We'll throw it out of the flat to Favich. Make the catch of the 30. Eric Muzi misses a tackle. Willie Jackson will finish him off. It'll be short of the first down by about four yards as he's tackled inside the 40. Actually, I'm looking at the yard marker. He needed to get to the 37 for a first down. It'll be very close, and I think they may have the first down. I thought the first down was out across the 40, looking across the field, but it is behind the 40, and it will be good enough for a first down. They do convert. And already we're seeing the inability for Bucknell to bring down a receiver on first hit. And uh, the, the extra effort that they're getting right now is moving the chains because that tackle was made at the 35, but great effort by Bombich right there, or uh, by uh, F Fabish, to get that first down. So it'll be first down and 10 for Penn at the 38-yard line, their own. And this afternoon now with the six first downs to Bucknell zero as the first quarter has been totally dominated by the Quakers. They got down inside the 10 and coughed it up last time on an interception to George Juanis. Penn with the ball on the right hash, has it first and 10 at their own 37 and a half yard line. One back, two receivers to the left side. Again, they go with double tight ends. Play fake to Abby, back to passes to Rosa. Rolls out, throws it to Tucker in the flat, makes the catch at the 40, comes across the 50, and out of bounds at the 45. Crudup made the tackle. Another good fake by DeRosa kind of came naked to the near side of the field. All the traffic went to the left side, and that tight end Tucker was wide open. Well, they better start biting uh, or sitting at home right now on these bootlegs because DeRosa's got his way out there right now, and it was an unbelievable downfield block by Mark Favors, the wide receiver, on Josh LeBrecht that freed uh, the receiver for an extra 10 yards. Six of eight for DeRosa for 61 yards in this first quarter. No score, 7.15 to go in the period. Penn on their second drive, they're in Bucknell territory again. They run Jason Scott up the middle as he's in the game at tailback. And Scott will get a short gain from the Bucknell 45 down to about the Bucknell 43-yard line. Making the tackle was Rob Bird with help from Ed Berman. One thing that really stands out about DeRosa is that he does the little things very, very well. He carries out his ball fakes, which makes those bootlegs really very effective, as well as anybody I've seen play football in college right now. Second down and eight for Penn after a two-yard game. Basic and Fabish go wide to the left side. Bucknell put both corners over there. As the tight ends book in the line, they have one back. On the counter, they'll hand it to Scott. Scott will be met in the backfield by Ed Berman. He'll make the tackle for a two-yard loss. And Penn will have another third and long, third and ten. Berman read that play, but more importantly, got him around the hips and wouldn't let him go. Well, that's their, uh, that's their second favorite run right there. That's just a, a counter tray where they pull the, the offside guard and the wing back, and they really pound on Ed Berman, the defensive end. The right guard, the least experienced, Matt Julian, really gave that pull away by lining deep in the backfield. Maybe Bucknell has some sort of a little read on him right now. Third down and 10 for Penn. DeRosa on a straight drop, four-man rush. Throws it right side to Masick, nearly makes a finger trip grab. Moosey was there on coverage. It would have been a first down at the 30. It's incomplete. And now Jeff Salvino will come out to punt it away for Penn. Two things, that was great coverage. Definitely a drop ball by Masick, which he probably doesn't do very often. 
uh, now that he's the leading receiver in Penn history. But great opportunity for Bucknell right there to stop him. Uh, not much of a pass rush, but uh, nevertheless, good coverage downfield. Mike Phillips returning punts this week, replacing John Sikowski. Phillips returned for 281 yards a year ago, the second best in Bucknell history. He lines up at the 10. It goes over his head in a wise decision. It goes into the end zone. Last couple of weeks, I think Bucknell's John Sikowski had some indecision on when to field it and when not to field it, and that was a good decision there. I thought he made some bad decisions last week at Princeton. It really caught him a lot of uh, field position in a game where field position was very, very important. So Phillips is back there returning punts. Bucknell will get the touch back and start on the 20 for the second time in as many possessions. Last time, Bucknell went three and out. Quickly running down the pen defense for he didn't have a time, uh, time last series. Ossentowski, Foley, and Merrow, the down three. Foster, McGarity, the outside linebackers. Joey Allen, the converted fullback inside with Tim Gage. Robertson and Allen on the corners. And Morris and Lyons are the safeties. First and 10, Bucknell at their own 20. Fox back to pass. Fox hit as he throws. Maybe it's a fumble. The ball is loose on the 10-yard line. Gage may have it, the linebacker for Penn. The officials did not say he threw the football, and it's going to be a fumble recovery. Penn has it on the Bucknell 10. Fox just let the ball slip out, and once again, the hard rush bothers Fox, who's not very mobile. Well, it's not Fox's fault, and Norris Wilson and Tom Gadd better get together on the sidelines because that's the second time that uh, McGarity has come free. And what he's doing is he's lining out outside the defensive end uh, as a defensive end. They have a man over the tight end, and he's lining him outside, and nobody's picking him up, and he's hot and coming free right now. They've got to make a decision on who's going to block this guy. Nobody's blocking him right now. So Penn has it at the Bucknell nine-yard line, which is exactly where they had it when they threw the interception in the end zone a couple of drives ago. No score, 5.41 to go in the quarter. Abby over the right side will plow his way inside the six, close to the five. We'll call it a pickup of about three. Charles Crudup on the tackle for Bucknell along with Rob Bird. Second and goal from the six coming up for the Quakers. That was a huge turnover because the Bucknell defense had just come off the field after having a very good series against Penn, keeping them making them on it. And now they're going to come right back on the field. They've been on the field the entire first quarter. Bucknell has had the ball, I believe, for what, four plays in this game. DeRosa on a draw to Abby inside the five, inside the two, inside the one. He scores the touchdown. A six-yard run for Ahmed Abbey, a 5'9", 172-pound junior who scores his first touchdown of the season. Well, Abbey could have closed his eyes and scored on that play because he could have gone in any direction. The whole thing just opened up like Moses in the Red Sea right there. The, the floodgates opened it, and he was able to really find his way in there pretty easily. On for the extra point is sophomore Jeremiah Greathouse, who is six for six on extra points this season. As the Quakers lead six to nothing with 5.04 to go in this first quarter. Snapping for Penn will be John Riccio, and the holder is wide receiver Miles Masick. Snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is up, it is high, and it is good. We've got a break in the action with the score. It is Penn 7, Bucknell nothing, 5.04 to go in the quarter. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. First, it is seven to nothing in favor of the Quakers, thanks to a fumble recovery. It was recovered by linebacker Tim Gage at the Bucknell nine-yard line, and the Quakers now will kick off Bucknell. will try to get something going offensively. They've had it for only four plays in the first quarter. The kick will go to Milton Moore on the 18, a very short kick. Come across the 20, out across the 30, the 33-yard line. Now the coverage for the Quakers is Austin Reddig, a reserve defensive back. 
The Bucknell will start with their best beginning field position out across the 30 yard line. The disappointing thing right now is we don't even know what the Penn defense is like because they haven't been tested. Uh, basically, Bucknell has had two real bad miscues on both passes attempted. And McGarrity, Tom McGarrity, the senior defensive end, has just come free both times and nullified anything Bucknell was trying to do. First and 10, Bucknell with the lone back, Lemon, as Bombick goes in motion to the right side. Box will hand off on the counter to Lemon, and knifing in is Joey Allen, and Lemon will be nailed for a five-yard loss. No one laid a hand on the six-foot, 231-pound senior that used to play running back, and he was able to grab Lemon around the ankles and pull him down for the loss. Loss of four on the play, officially. Second down and 14 coming. No boom to the right, Sikowski to the left. Yeah, he was all Ivy League as a wrestler. And uh, right now, he's just decided that he's not going to be blocked. Right there, what they're doing is they're staying in a base 52 defense, meaning both offensive guards are uncovered. They have linebackers four yards off the line, Joey Allen and Timmy Gage. And the guards just are not engaging the linebackers. The linebackers are challenging them and aggressively meeting them at the line of scrimmage right now. 7-0 Penn, 340 to go in the first quarter. And now Bucknell on third down and 14 is going to spend a timeout to decide what they want to do. 3.39 to go officially. We'll take this break. 7-0 Penn. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Seconds to go in the first quarter. Penn seven, Bucknell nothing. The Bison staring at a third and 13 from their own 29 yard line. Trying for their first first down of the game. Fox back to pass, hit as he throws, and the pass flutters low to Lemon at the 35. Would have been well short of the first down as Nick Morris had coverage. And uh, the Bison right now have their offense still remaining on the field, and now they're going to bring the punt team on finally, as they may have not realized it was third down. Miller will come on to punt for the second time today. Bucknell has turned it over once and now has had to punt twice. Fabish standing in single safety back at his own 30-yard line. The snapper for Bucknell is Scott Lennox, 10 men at the line for Penn. Miller awaits the snap. Nice snap, no rush. Penn plays for the return. Miller's kick is short. It'll bounce at the 37 of Penn. Take a Bucknell roll on the turf inside the 25. Inside the 20, very nice roll for Bucknell. It's going to roll dead inside the 20, actually at the 15-yard line. A 56-yard punt for Miller, his longest of the season, probably 25 on the roll. Well, he's the early game MVP for Bucknell. He's, he's helped him out twice on, on two punts, but Bucknell's offense is huddled up on the sideline right now, and they've got to make a decision whether they want to play this football game or not right now because they're getting whipped at the line of scrimmage. And uh, they, they have sort of that dazed look about them, the way they're kind of walking around. First and 10 for Penn as the ball is on their own 15-yard line. Two receivers wide to the right. The lone back is uh, the running back. I think it's Scott. No, it's somebody new that's in there for Penn. Carrying the football this time is Bruce Rossignol, who's not even on the two deep, not even on the three deep at that position. He comes in for one play, and Rossignol comes out of the game and has close to first down yardage, nine yards on the pickup. For Bruce Rossignol. They had their entire backup receiving core in there as well. And here comes Masick. Here he is lining up 
I've never seen a receiver line up outside the numbers. And DeRosa will play fake to Abby, roll to the right side, throw it back over the middle to Masick coming around, and they'll say he trapped it at the 35. It'll bring up third and a yard and a half. And Brian, to clarify what you're talking, he lines up outside the numbers, probably no more than three or four steps from the sidelines. They counter into, it looks like, into the far side. DeRosa comes back, and in the meantime, Masick kind of just runs across the field. It's a bootleg. It's a very slow-acting bootleg, and it gives Masick the entire field to work uh, the defensive back to. He probably has an option, depending on what the defense does, whether they're zone or man, uh, to come across the middle and look for the open scene. Jason Scott is now in the game as the lone running back. It's third down and a little more than a yard for Penn. The twin set is to the near side of the field. DeRosa will play fake to Scott. Bootleg to the right. It's tipped by Hunter Adams and nearly intercepted by Josh Lebrecht at the 35. As big Hunter Adams got his hand up to tip the ball, it fluttered in the air, and Lebrecht just couldn't quite reach out to get it before it hit the turf. Well, I'm, it's glad, I'm glad to see that Bucknell is now reacting to some of the things that Penn was doing. Hunter Adams stayed at home right there. He played the bootleg. They know they're coming back to the wide side of the field. Lebrecht almost made a huge play. On the punt is Jeff Salvino for Penn. Back to return it is Phillips. Salvino's kick is a non-spiraling kick. Phillips will run up, fumble the punt, but fumble it out of bounds. He'll actually gain three yards or so as he tried to field it on the run near the sidelines. And Bucknell continues to have problems with their punt return game. Well, problems, but they just have done a couple of things very well. Defensively, they just got very aggressive on that last series. And returning the punt right there, Phillips really made an aggressive play to get the ball. It went out of bounds, but at least they're getting the ball on the other side of the 50-yard line right now. It's time for the offense to step up and be counted on right now. They've got a great opportunity on a short field to try to get some points on his board. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Still seven for Penn, nothing for Bucknell. Fox has Lemon the lone back, three wide receivers set. Fox back to pass, looks right side for Phillips, makes the catch and scampers out of bounds, very close to a first down. It looks like you'll have it, and that'll be the first first down of the game for the Bison. Well, it was the first first down because it's the first thing they did right on offense all day, and the, the best thing is they kept Jim Fox clean. He was able to get rid of the ball on timing. Phillips made a nice 10-yard out. As a first down, he moved it. Well, it looks like they thought they were going to move the chains. They are going to move it finally. Bob Horst is in the game now at fullback. He'll be back after his concussion. First and 10 for the Bison at the Penn 37 yard line. OJ Perkins to the right side, Phillips to the left side. Backs are split now. Horst and Lemon, five man front for the Quakers. Fox back to pass on first down. Fox going long left side to Phillips. One for one with Robertson, and it's overthrown incomplete. Robertson had good coverage on Phillips as Bucknell tried to stretch him long down the left sideline. It's not a bad play. It's not a bad play. I'd like to see him maybe attack the line of scrimmage a little bit more, uh, but it's, it's worth a shot to keep the Penn defense loose. Second down and 10 coming up for Bucknell at the Penn 37. Two minutes and 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. Glad you're with us on the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg, W. WPA in Williamsport. Second and 10 from the 37. Perkins to the right, Phillips to the left, backs in an offset eye. Fox looking over a five-man front for Penn and now moves the fullback, I believe it's Horst, into the eye and now a flag will drop. Bucknell did not take too much time. It looks like maybe some movement in the line. I thought it was Ted, uh, excuse me, Ted Stover that picked up, but as a tight end, he'd be allowed to pick up and reset. They're going to call an illegal shift against Bucknell. It'll be a five-yard penalty, so it'll be second and 15. Well, I think that's the first penalty of the game, and it came at a bad time because they have some field position. They've got a nice tailwind blowing, uh, something that might be able to give Miller, you know, an opportunity to, to kick a field goal here if they stall on this series. But now at the 41-yard line or 42-yard line, they're really going to have to make that difference up. Second and 15 again after the illegal motion. Perkins going to the right side, Phillips to the left. Stover the tight end on the left side, and the backs will be split behind Fox. And a five-man front for the Quakers. Fox on a long count, back to pass, has some time, steps up, hit as he throws, throws it to Perkins, who makes a juggling catch with a Penn defender on his back. He won't quite have the first down, but he'll have about 12 of the yards back. Kevin Allen on the tackle, but a very good concentrated catch by Perkins over the middle. It was a great catch. I'm a little surprised they've got the backup group of receivers in. Perkins and Phillips in his note boom, and uh, Sikowski on the sidelines. Note boom's just coming in the ball game here. But that's just a great concentrated play uh, on Phillips to be able to catch that ball. Third down and one, or maybe a yard and a half. Bucknell will play with 
one tight end, that's Stover. Perkins to the right, Noteboom to the left, Baxter in an eye. Noteboom in motion from left to right. Fox will toss it. No, he'll hand it to the fullback, Horst, who has the first down, fighting, and then may have gotten thrown back. The spot will be very crucial. Strong safety, Nick Morris there to make the tackle with linebacker Joey Allen. And it looks like they're going to give him the forward progress, but it will not be enough for a first down. It'll be fourth and inches. Bucknell is going to bring another tight end, Cal Wilcox, into the game. A wing back, Ron Rocket. And they're going to go for it on fourth and inches at the pen 28. Well, they have to go for it. And I really thought that Bombich, you know, needed to run a little bit harder there. He it got was through horse. the hole. It was horse. He needed to run a little bit harder through the hole because there was a hole there. He needs to just put that head down and uh, make sure that he falls forward to get the uh, the benefit of the doubt. Double tight ends, one receiver, backs in an eye, fourth and inches. Fox under center, six-man line for Penn. Hand off to the tailback, Lemon. He did not get it. He did not make the line of scrimmage. Joey Allen once again on the tackle, and that time it looked like Lemon was a little bit slow getting going, getting the exchange from Fox, but again, great penetration on the Penn defensive side. Well, they, they really penetrated inside with uh, Foley and Marrow and uh, really knocked the Bucknell linemen off of their blocks. They never really got anything established. Lemon never really had a chance in that play to even make a cut. So Penn will take over on downs at their own 30. So the Bison had a chance to get a first down on a third down run and a fourth down run, and Penn stalls them just short both times. Three receivers now in the game for Penn. Back to pass is DeRosa, being blitz, throws it long for Masick, who's one for one with Crudup, and it's off the fingertips of Masick. He jumped out at the 40 to try to catch it, but couldn't bring it in. Well, Penn has really shown a, a variety of formations here. That was a wide open three wide receiver attack, and it was straight drop, drop back with a play action fake. And, um, well, that was just off the fingertips of Masick there, but it was excellent coverage along the way. Five incompletions in a row now for DeRosa. We're down to 37 seconds to go in the quarter with Penn on top by the score of 7 to nothing. but they've completely outplayed Bucknell in the first quarter. And the Bison probably should be pretty lucky to be down just a touchdown. Probably should be two scores because Bucknell did get an interception in the end zone on Penn's first drive. Back to pass, now handing it off on a draw is DeRosa, and Penn will get about four or five on the run out to about the 34-yard line, 29 seconds to go in the quarter, probably time for one more play. We'll give Jason Scott the gain of four. As Scott and Abby have seen all the time until we've yet to see Dion Camp in this game, and he was her leading runner coming into the football game. I can't really get a hold on what Penn is trying to do. Right now, they're spreading out the Bucknell defense and uh, trying to throw the football, and they're just trying to change it up with a draw last play. Eight seconds to go. They may not run another play in the quarter, and they won't. Three, two, one. The first quarter is history with the score Penn 7, Bucknell nothing. We'll be back with more after this timeout. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Throws it out in the flat to Abby, makes the catch in the backfield, comes across the 35. 
be stopped short of the first down by about a yard. Berman and Jackson on the tackle, a pickup of four as he caught the ball deep in the backfield and couldn't quite get out. How many offensive plays for Bucknell in the first quarter, uh, Brian? A total of, uh, looks like 11. 11 plays in the first quarter, most of them coming on that last series as they got the you know, first down. But once again, the Bucknell defense able to hold, force and Penn to punt. Fourth down and a yard to go. On the punt for Penn is Salvino. He'll punt it away. High tumbling kick. Phillips back will make the catch at the 27. Come up to the 28, and he'll be tackled right there. Virtually no return. 34 yards on the kick for Salvino. McGarity on the tackle for Penn with help from Austin Redding. And Redding making his second special teams tackle of the game. Well, I think Phillips really wanted to take off with that return there, but he's looking into a very strong sun. And I think that he wanted to make sure that he caught the ball first and was very sure-handed about it before he took off. And he looked a little hesitant after he caught the ball. Opening moments of quarter number two, 14-18 to go in the quarter. 7 to nothing in favor of Penn. Bucknell with the football for the first time in the second quarter. First and 10 on their own 28-yard line. Lemon the lone back. Fox back to pass, throws it out in the flat to Perkins. Makes his second catch of the game at the 34 and skips out of bounds. Right there, it'll be a pickup of about five or six on the plate of Perkins, and Bucknell picks up about half of what they needed for the first down on first down. Well, Perkins is a guy that I've been clamoring for the last three weeks to get more action because he's the one guy on the Bucknell offense that can really stretch a defense and really make a defensive back play honestly and not cheat because of that great burst and speed that he has, and he was able to use it on that play. Back in the offset eye, no boom to the left, Sikowski to the right. Lennox over the ball at center. Fox looking over a five-man front. It's a toss from the short side to Lemon. Lemon across the 35, breaks a tackle out across the 40 for the first down. And he gets to the 41-yard line. Joey Allen with yet another tackle for Penn. But this time, Lemon runs for seven yards and picks up the first. Well, he picked up seven that time because I've got to give credit to the offensive linemen when they do a good job. But Patrick Johnson going against Mike Kennedy there did a nice job of shielding him at the point of attack and creating a nice little gap for Richie to get through. Do you remember your first football game as a freshman? Because that was what we had Janssen doing today. Well, it's a big thrill. I tell you what, his heart is fluttering. First and 10 at the 42-yard line of Bucknell. Bombic out of the backfield in motion, leaving Lemon as the lone back. He'll get the handoff and try to run to the left side, but nothing is doing. Allen there again, also with help from uh, Merrow and Foster. So the right side of the Penn defense was right there to close the side of the defense right there, Bob, and, and what they're doing is it's just great pursuit from both sides, eliminating the cutback that Rich Lemon likes to do uh, if the sh front side is shut down. Sokowski now and Perkins wide to the left, no boom wide to the right, the long back is Lemon on second and 11. Fox back to pass, rushed, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, Perkins with yet another catch at the 48 of Bucknell. It'll be a gain of six or seven more, and Bucknell once again will have a very workable third down conversion. He'll be left with about a third and four. Well, that time Tom McGarity came in again, but this time uh, the, the, the offense of Bucknell was able to pick him up. Uh, Muziak was able to come out on him and pick him up, or I think that was Muziak that was playing right tackle on that play, and he was able to pick him up uh, finally. In be able to stop him from coming free. It may have been George Hogan yes. that had just slipped in there. That's probably why you're confused a little bit. Hogan is in there at right tackle now for Misiak. Third down and two as they gave Perkins a very favorable spot all the way to the 49. Lemon will go up the middle. He should have the first down to the pen 47. It'll be a gain of three or four for Lemon. And Lemon that time shot through a hole that was there for just a moment and enough to move the sticks. So Bucknell right now shuffling the offensive line. They have George Hogan. He was at right guard a week ago in the second half. Janssen is at right guard. Lennox is at center. And then the veteran side, Donkers and Gay on the left yeah, side. I apologize for that miscue right there, but that was George Hogan. And that was the best burst by Rich Lemon I've seen in two weeks as he really looked himself getting through that hole. A good, quick burst at the point of attack. Three wide receiver set, actually a four wide receiver set. Now they send Perkins in motion and hand off up the gut to Lemon, and there's no room whatsoever. Penn's defensive line looked like Plymouth Rock standing there and Lemon just uh, maybe lucky to get back. Tackle by Joey no movement whatsoever. Uh, Foley and Ossentowski and Merrow up front, they made the stop and didn't give any room. Well, that was a quick inside track uh, trap. Jason Donkers leading away the left guard, trapping the left defensive tackle of Penn, which was Kevin Kennedy and, or Mike Kennedy. And, uh, that's a timing play. That's a play where it's based on timing. you got to hit that a little quicker. Second down and
situation where if they get very close again to making it on fourth down, they might look to it to keep the offense on the field. Jim Fox had a couple receivers open. Both Phillips and Perkins were open downfield. But I don't think he felt confident controlling you on the run that time. And maybe a safer play just running it and picking up a few yards of what he could get. 7-0 pan, 11-25 to go in the half. Third down and six. It'll be a fourth down and 13, and the Bison will have to send the punting team on again as Penn's defense did a nice job on the previous play and on this play of getting two Fox. Well, that was the senior captain again. That's Tom McGarity, and that might have been a reason why they made the change of uh, at, right def at right offensive tackle, putting George Hogan in for Miziak because Miziak missed him a couple of times in the first quarter, was able to let McGarity come free, and he was the one that forced the fumble on that big exchange problem back in the first quarter that led to the first touchdown. Fourth and 12, Miller will punt double safeties this time for Penn. Lions and Fabish as they both stand at the 10. Short punt, they'll come up, catch it in traffic. Fabish will make the fair catch at the 22. Just a 26-yard punt for Miller, and Penn will start it on their own 22-yard line with 10.37 remaining in the first half. Seven to nothing, the Quakers in front. Well, I think Penn's gonna come back with a more simplified offense like they did in the first drive and uh, move the ball just with the one setback and, and maybe come after them running the football a little bit more. They've been throwing it and not very effectively uh, throughout this uh, second quarter. And with the football, first and 10, they hand off to Abby up the middle, 25-30, very close to the first down at the 32. He'll be stopped a yard short at the 31. And it'll be second and one coming up as the Quakers ran it straight up the middle to Abby, taking a look at their individual rushing. Abby is the leader, eight carries for 35 yards. They've got Scott four times for 18 yards, and a couple of other guys have carried once each in the game. Fabish and Basic wide to the left side, double tight ends, and again, Abby, the lone back for Penn. Five-man line for the Bison defensively, second down and one. Hand off to Abby. Abby will go across the line. He may have the first down. He'll be close. He needed one and may have gotten a yard and a half. Haggerty and Berman on the tackle for Bucknell, and it is enough to move the sticks for the Quakers. Well, I thought they would come back to what was working early in the first quarter is something that they looked very effective doing, which is just running straight in between the tackles. And it looks like uh, Abby is going to be the guy that's going to be carrying the mail for him in this drive. And again, going without the huddle, but again, as Brian says, it's not a true two-minute no huddle. They pretty much just stand at the line and call their play, kind of like Hofstra did a couple of years ago. Flag down as somebody may have moved too soon for the Quakers, and instead of first and 10, it'll more than likely be first and 15 coming up as Penn should be hit with some kind of a procedure penalty right now. And there it is, a legal procedure against Penn. Very few penalties in this first half. 9.41 to go if you're just joining us. Penn leads 7 to nothing on a six-yard run by Abby for the touchdown. It was a nine-yard drive as Penn recovered a fumble at the Bucknell 9. Penn also had it down at the 9 as well. Earlier than that, it threw an interception. So, Wickers have been able to move the football. Bucknell's defense late first, early second has really settled down. First and 15, play fake to Scott. DeRosa bootlegs, tips it again, and it's intercepted by Willie Hill. 25-20, he could score. 10-5, he'll get to the two. And Bucknell comes up with the turnover, and again, I think it was Hunter Adams that came up with a tip. It was Hunter Adams that stayed home. He's playing smart football here right now and really put a lot of pressure on DeRosa. Hunter Adams at 6'5", a very good athlete, great basketball player, was talking to Andy Cohen before the game today, and he said that's where he discovered Hunter Adams. It was on a 3-on-3 three -three basketball uh, tournament, and he was just the best athlete on the court. He stayed home, tipped the ball like he did in the first quarter. Josh Lebrecht missed that interception, but this time Willie Hill with the big interception, the nice run, an opportunity to get right back in this game right now. First and goal for Bucknell at the pen. We are in a half line. They'll go with double tight ends, trying to tie the game right here. Fox to the fullback, Bombick. Bombick will get inside the one, but will not score. Second down will be forthcoming. Nine minutes and seven seconds to go. And Brian, you look at this football game, Penn has been able to move the ball pretty much up and down the field until late. But now Bucknell comes up with a big turnover, and they're a foot away from possibly tying this football game. It looks to me like Penn has just gotten relaxed after that first drive, after the fumble, the, the touchdown. They seem like they've just relaxed as a football team. 
I'm upset right now with the Bucknell offensive line. On short yards here down the goal line, you get all the way up on the ball, you don't give them any room to penetrate, and you stick the ball in the end zone here. Second and goal from the one, double tight ends, they run the fullback, Bombic, and this time they break the plate for the score, and it is now 10-7, and Bucknell six is the Bison score, with 8.32 to go in the half, and the extra point could tie the game. And all of a sudden, sort of that dazed feeling that surrounded the Bucknell team after that turnover in the first quarter and the Penn touchdown, there's rejuvenation and life on the sidelines right now, and they believe that they can make some plays right now, and they're going to have an opportunity here as we enter uh, late in the second quarter to stay in this game and win this game. For Bombic, his first touchdown of the season and of his collegiate career, the sophomore out of Pittsburgh. Miller on for the extra point this season. Miller is a perfect four for four. Sikowski to hold, Wilcox to snap. High snap, and Sikowski puts it down. Miller's kick, I believe, was tipped, and it is good. We've got a break in the action. It fluttered through the goal post to tie it. 7-7 with 8.32 to go in the half. We'll be back with more after this timeout. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network.
run-up will make the tackle with help from Hunter Adams coming back on the pursuit, but it's going to be well short of a first down, and coming back to punt will be Jeff Salvino, and the uh, Bison will be getting the football back on a three and out. Well, here's a quarterback that produced almost 400 yards of offense last year as the Quakers won the Ivy League and were undefeated. Bucknell's got to feel very good that they didn't try to go downfield with that ball, especially with the receiver, the quality of Mason. Fourth down and eight to go for Penn. Salvino on to punt, 10-man rush, high snap, rush comes. He's going to get it blocked. No, he pulls it down and doesn't kick it. Bucknell will tackle him at the 29-yard line and take over there. They said everyone in the kitchen sink at him. He decided that he would have had it blocked and instead tried to come outside and find a little bit of opening. Couldn't and the Bison will get it. It's not a turnover in the books, it's a stop on downs, but it might as well go in the books as a turnover. Yeah, it might as well be a turnover, and I'll tell you right now, the attitude of this Penn team is that they're just sort of sleepwalking after that first quarter. They've done absolutely nothing in the game in the second quarter, and Bucknell right now with an opportunity to really gain the momentum. First and 10, the Bison inside the 30 at the Penn 29. The Bison coming on here in the second quarter. Toss right side to Lemon, trying to get around the corner. He'll dive from the 29 to the 28. Penn strung him out to the short side, making the tackle for the Quakers was Mark Van Meter, a linebacker. McGarity and Allen were also there again for Penn. Well, Miziak is back in at right tackle, and right there, uh, Janssen and Miziak got to do a better job at the point of attack on the defensive end in comboing block that guy, because if they can, Richie, Richie Lemon can, can turn, turn that corner, corner clean, clean instead, instead of a one-yard one yard game, game, we're talking about a five-yard five game. No blue to the left, Sikowski to the right, Bombing in front of Lemon, in the eye. Five-man front for Penn, second and nine. Fox play fakes, going long over the middle to no food. Oh, off his fingertips with the five. He had a step, man for man, on Dana Lyons, the free safety, and it was just a little bit overthrown. No food tried to stretch out and haul it in, but couldn't quite do it. Well, we say that this is a game of inches, and that was inches away from seven points. It was a great throw by Jim Fox because every time that he stepped back and throw today, McGarity has hit him. And he hit him that time just as he threw the ball, but he had enough on it. As that ball was late, almost perfect in no moves hands. Maybe a couple of inches long. Third and nine for the Bison. No move to the left. Sikowski and Perkins to the right. Eleven the long back. Phillips is also in the game, so there are four wide receivers. Fox back to pass. Ten will blitz. It's a screen. Lemon catches it to the 33. Spins inside the 30, inside the 25, and the 23. It'll leave Bucknell a couple of yards shy, and it'll be interesting to see whether it'll be field goal or go for a time. And they're going to bring Rich Miller into the field goal team on to try to put the Bison in front with 5.20 to go in the first half. It is a fourth and three. It'll be a 39-yard attempt. Sikowski to hold Wilcox to snap. It'll be from the right hash and to try to give Bucknell the lead. Miller is 5 of 8 this season on field goals. The season record is 12, held by Al Eubis. 39-yard attempt to try to give Bucknell the lead. Nice snap, nice hold. Miller's kick is high enough. It's long enough, and it is good. And the Bison jump into the lead by the score of 10 to 7. We've got a break in the action. 4.51 to go in the half. Bucknell by three. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Bucknell leading with 4.51 to go in the second quarter, and the Bison defense has really set things up for the Bison offense. They basically come up with two turnovers. They force a punter not to kick the football, tackle him on the last play, it leads to a field goal. They get the interception on the previous drive, and momentum is wearing blue and orange and not blue and red right now. Well, that's what was missing from last week's game, was just the, the lack of a big play. This is a much better kick this time. 
We'll see if they can cover it a little bit better. Fabish takes it at the 8, comes to the near side. He'll get out across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The ball squirted loose, but I think they're going to say the ground caused the fumble again. And Penn will start at first and 10 at their own 21. Fabish got from the 8 to the 21, so a return of about uh, 13 yards, but good coverage that time by Bucknell. Well, after last week's game, it's, it's good to see the Bucknell Bison uh, excited right now at this point in a football game. And uh, they expect to make plays right now. I think that they have got a good feel for what Penn's trying to do offensively and uh, really been able to come up with a couple of really nice big plays, forced DeRosa into doing some things he doesn't want to do. Well, if you're enjoying this one, coming to you from Franklin Field in Philadelphia, 444 to go in the half, 10-7 Bucknell. Handoff to Abby. Abby out across the 25 to the 28 or 29-yard line. On the run over the left side, Penn will pick up seven, second and three coming up for the Quakers. Well, that was that uh, offside counter play where they pull the guard and the wing back and really just try to force the hole on the strong side going over Sears' right. That's to uh, Penn's left and able to pick up eight yards. That's what I expected him to do most of today is just pound the football, not come out and try to act real cute with a lot of bootlegs and and, uh, you know, just stop and goes downfield. I don't think it's necessary for them to do that to move the football. A little more than four minutes to go in the half, second and three for the Quakers. Bucknell in a four-man line. They'll blitz a couple of linebackers, and the linebackers are right there to nail Amon Abbey. Michael Haggerty, the first one to kind of slow him down. Rob Burt finished him off, and the blitzing linebackers timed the play perfectly to nail him for a loss. Well, it's, it's one thing to blitz the linebackers. It's another thing to make that tackle, and that's what they're doing better right now, but... That's because the whole team feels uplifted, and there's some enthusiasm right now and a real belief that they can win this game, and people are playing harder. Third down and a long three for Penn for the first down. They'll go with three receivers. Abby the lone back. Four-man line for Bucknell. The linebackers will blitz again. Penn picks it up, throws the ball to Masick, who drops it. In and out of the hands. Willie Jackson, Josh Lebrecht, and Mark Miller made a sandwich out of Masick and forced him to drop the ball. It was on his hands, and another three and out. Salvino will come on to punt, and we'll see if Bucknell goes for the rush again. Well, Masick may be the all-time leading receiver in Penn history. He might be an All-American, but Willie Jackson is up to the task, and he's been all over him like a shadow today. And uh, right there, that's the second or third pass that Masick has dropped because of great coverage by Jackson. Fourth down and three and a half to go. Nice pass from center. Salvino will punt it. Bucknell will take the football. Phillips will feel the ball in his own 36, come across the 40 to the 45-yard line where he'll be knocked down. Turn of about six or seven for Phillips, 36 yards on the kick by Salvino. But again, excellent field position for the Bison, starting with 3.23 to go in the half, up three points, and they have it at their own 45. The Bucknell, the Bucknell defense right now have got to feel very, very good about what they've been able to do. They've been able to stymie this Penn offense, a very versatile and varied offense. They've been able to stymie him and get the ball in good field position for the offense. No boom to the left. Perkins and Sikowski to the right. The lone back is Lemon. The Bison lead Penn. Winners of 23 in a row by three late in the half. It's a flat pass to Grimm in the flat on the left side, and he played it simple, dropped the football. No one was within five yards of him, and I think he thought about running with it before he actually had the football. Tell no, that, break. That, that's exactly what he did. He turned his head to go upfield. I, I think he probably was uh, one of those deals where you're too open and it kind of scares you like where is everybody but he had a lot of green in between to run with. Now Brian you were telling us today about your catch at Lambeau Field was that the kind of play you were out there by yourself and you hauled it in? My hands were feathery soft not made of stone. <laughs> not frozen in Green Bay that day? Second down and 10. Fox back to pass going left side and Nopu makes the catch for the first down. Keeps his feet twists inside and gets inside the 40 to the 39. A pickup of 15 on the play. Lemon, excuse me, Noteboom just totally juked the corner, Laren Robertson on the play, and if he could have held his footing just a little bit better, instead of the four yards he picked up, he might have got a score. That was a great throw by Fox, as he really whistled that ball out there. It got to Noteboom on a line, in a hurry, on a frozen rope. And one thing I like about Noteboom is when he catches the ball, he likes to do a lot with after. Fox now six for 10 on the day for 59 yards. It's first and 10, Bucknell at the pen, 39. 2.56 to go on the half. Fox handing it up the middle to Lemon. Lemon breaks the first tackle, but not the second. He'll pick up three to the 36-yard line, second and seven coming up. 244, 43, the clock running. Bucknell will substitute, bring some fresh receivers into the game. And the Bison right now have Lemon averaging just two yards a carry, 11 carries for 22 yards, but has passed the 3,000 mark for his career. He needed today 19, and he has 22. 
hasn't broken a long one yet today, although he did get 11 yards in the one draw, but he's close. And uh, look for something to break here pretty quick. Second down and seven after the three-yard gain. Fox back to pass. Fox has time, throws it left side to Sikowski, makes the catch at the 33 and skips out of bounds. He'll pick up three more. Bucknell will have a third and four or so to go for a first down. He gave Sikowski the room the outside, the corner did, and Fox read it and took it. Well, Fox has uh, got a nice little rhythm going here, throwing the football, and he's gaining some confidence. He's putting a lot of zip on the ball, and uh, he's not throwing off his back foot. He's stepping into the throw. And that's also a credit to the offensive line, which has kept him pretty clean here of late. 10-7, Bucknell. Clock stop with 2.14 to go in the half. Backs are split. Three wide receivers in the game for Bucknell. Penn with a four-man rush. Fox hit as he throws, and the ball will land in the turf at about the 30. And it'll be decision time for Bucknell. Fourth down and four to go for the first down. It'll be about a 50-yard field goal. And it appears the offense is going to stay on the field because a punt would probably go into the end zone to give him maybe 12 or 13 yards, and now Bucknell is going to spend a timeout to talk about it. So we'll take the break with them. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go in the half. 10-7, Bison over Penn. You're listening to Bucknell Football on the Bison Sports Network. Spike the ball, but Penn was afraid they'd be on their defensive line. They had to waste the timeout. 
right now, Bucknell's in a good, favorable position. They've got the ball at the eight and a half yard line. First down, 35 seconds with their timeouts in order. They have a two-way go. They can run a draw or a quick hitter to Lemon, or they can also go to the air. And that's going to keep Penn a little bit off balance right here. And Bucknell will go to the sidelines. They've got their entire offense huddling around. Tom Gadd, the head coach, offensive coordinator, coordinator Craig Maropoulos is high above the field on the far side in the press box. And it's a long ways up there. We're kind of nestled between the upper and the lower decks on the opposite side of the field. Well, you know, those writers, they never know what they're talking about anyways, Bob. And they're so far away, they're just probably going to have to watch the tape of the film to see what happened. But one thing that's for sure, no matter where you're sitting in the stadium, is this Bucknell team has life. And there's a lot of enthusiasm. Right now, these people can't stop kind of jumping around. I think they feel like they're on the verge of something really big happening today. 35 seconds to go, 10 to 7, Bucknell leading as we come late in the second quarter. Penn, of course, with the record 23-game winning streak. Bucknell comes to the line. We'll call it first and goal at the 8. The backs are split, three wide receivers. And somebody moved. I think it may have been Brian Gay on the left side. It'll now be first down and goal at the 13. One second ticked off the clock as it goes back to 34 seconds. Brian Gay, a legal procedure. Brian Gay just flinched. And I think everybody saw it. It was just enough. It was going to be a run to Lemon right off uh, Janssen and Miziak on the right side. But I'm looking down here at Perkins. He's one-on-one -on -one against Kevin, Alley, the, Kevin Allen, the, uh, the returning starter and second-team All-Ivy League corner last year. I think it's a good matchup here. Uh, he's got a lot of room to work with, Perkins does, and he has a lot of speed. It's worth a shot to go to the end zone right now. And it's also a play that you say go to the end zone. If it's, if it's incomplete, of course, the clock stops, so you, you conserve your time as this is first down. It's very safe, but he's out here split outside the numbers, and he has a lot of room to work with for whether it's an inside route or if it's a quick slant or whatever. There's not a lot of inside help. Penn will take nose guard Tom Foley out of the game and bring in an extra defensive back, and that is Joe Piella, a freshman. So Penn right now will go to nickel coverage and, again, really maybe only go with two down linemen at this stage. Possibly an opportunity for Lemon to hit him with a quick draw. Something that looks like it's opening real, real well right now. Perkins to the right, Sikowski and Nopum to the left. Bombic and Lemon back split behind Fox. First and goal from the pen, 13. 34 seconds to go. It's a blitz. Fox outside to Lemon, threw it underneath. Biella had coverage. Perkins and Allen were going at it in the end zone. Good coverage by Penn, and Fox didn't have a whole lot of time to throw that time. Second and goal from the 13. 30 seconds to go in the half. Well, Allen, Allen, Kevin Allen was out here in the coverage, but Joey Allen was kissing Jimmy Fox to the turf as he blitzed inside. And once again, Fox with not much time to throw. But a good isolated situation with Lemon out here on the corner one-on-one. -on -one. It is second down and goal at the 13. Fox calling out the signals. Back to pass. Fox will throw the timing pattern to Perkins. He pushed off. We'll see if they call it. No. Incomplete. Perkins gave a shove in the back to Kevin Allen. Nobody comes up with the ball, but I thought that was offensive pass interference against Bucknell. And worst of all, I think Fox got hurt on that play. He's holding his right throwing wrist. Uh, they may make a, a change right here at quarterback. Fox has come off the field, and Mike Tomko is going to come on the field for the first time this season. 6'3", 220-pound sophomore out of Pittsburgh. Last year in JV football, 8 of 15 for 167 yards and two touchdowns. He's got a third and goal here at the 13 with 25 seconds to go. Four wide receivers, a fullback in which he has to work. Tomko will throw. The slide into no room, and it's a little behind him. No room can't bring it in at the five-yard line. Robertson had coverage, and Bucknell will bring the field goal team on to try to add to the 10-7 lead. But how about a pressure throw by Tomko, nearly getting maybe a touchdown on his first collegiate pass? Well, Tomko was a nice, safe pattern. It was a quick slant by Nopum over the middle. If he throws it out in front of him, it might have been seven points. Nonetheless, I thought Nopum should have caught that ball. It was well thrown. Be a 30-yard kick for Miller just inside the right hash to try to give Bucknell a six-point lead. Sikowski will hold. Wilcox will snap. Nice snap, nice hold. Miller's kick is up, and the kick is good. Miller with his second field goal, and Bucknell extends the lead to 13-7 to with 15 seconds to go in the half. Well, the play before that, we talked about Perkins going one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Allen. It was a great situation. It was a well-thrown ball by Fox. Perkins did push off in order to get free, 
It should have been a flag. They didn't call it. But if he's going to push off and it's a good throw, Perkins has got to catch that football. He's got to, it was, it was going to be a tough catch, but you got to come down and make that play. It really puts a lot of pressure on Penn. Miller has been up to the task, a 39 and a 30-yard field goal a season ago. Miller was just three of nine on field goals. This season, he is now seven out of 10 on field goals. And uh, again, has given Bucknell a six-point lead at 13 to seven. And now with 15 seconds to go, Bucknell's gonna have to make sure that uh, they can maintain this six-point lead in the locker room. Well, Rich Miller has done a nice job on the field goals the last two weeks. But in addition, his kickoffs have been great today and his punting has been outstanding. So all around right now, Rich Miller has played a very active part in this ball game. 15 seconds to go. The last time Penn lost was in late October in 1992. When was the last time they were behind at halftime? Probably Cornell last year. Um, Cornell, they came from the behind the last game of the season to secure that Ivy League uh, undefeated record. They had a tussle with Dartmouth the first week of the season. Dartmouth won 20 to 12. Jimmy Dartmouth lost 20 to 12 to Penn. Last week, one easily over Lafayette. 15 seconds to go in the half. We'll see if Miller kicks it deeper, squibs it. Miller will kick it along the ground. He'll go all the way to the deep man, back to the 10. Fabish will pick it up to the 20, to the near side, to the 25, cuts into the 30. The half will have one more play, probably, as Steve Pratico makes the tackle with eight seconds to go. I like the squib kick, Brian, if it gets to the back men, because it takes a long time. But so many times, it doesn't get to the back men, and then they'll fall on it up around the 35 or 40. I was in the Rich Miller's has had a heck of a day out here today. It was a good swift kick. It got all the way to the back line, and, and uh, it was a good tackle by Pratico in that play, too, to bring him down. First and 10 pen from their own 33. They have eight seconds remaining in the half. Again, the quarters have been just like night and day. Penn in the first quarter, Bucknell in the second quarter. They run it to Abbey up the middle, making the tackle for Bucknell will be Brian Davis, a gain of about six or seven, and that'll be the end of the first half. Bucknell scores three times in the second quarter, a touchdown and two field goals, and leads by the score of 13 to seven. You talk about how things have gone strategy-wise, I think one of the biggest differences in the second quarter was just enthusiasm and intensity by the Bison.